as well as uh, potable water, but we're staying focused on this high growth industry at the moment. All right. Thank you, Carl. On it. Are you ready? All right. You got a timer? Judges ready? Make sure you get close. Right here. You guys ready? Ready, set, fish! How much would you pay to ship nothing? Not a penny, you'd say. But last year, the international global airline cargo industry spent $5 billion shipping empty containers back and forth. Why might that be? The answer lies in global trade imbalances. For the US alone, the trade imbalances were 300,000 tons of air freight cargo, and that translated to 4,000 flights of empty containers coming back into the US. Not only does it waste revenue generating airline capacity, but that also adds up to a huge fuel bill, and that was $1.6 billion paid by the US airline industry last year. Based on our experience, my partner and I have designed an innovative cargo container design that's going to help airline companies pack more empty containers per flight. Our shrink, collapse, and stack design will reduce the transportation cost by 85%. We're already in talks with one of the world's leading airline cargo companies, and our patent is under processing. So if you want to solve a $5 billion problem, fund our prototype. Thank you. Does one box fit all? In other words, how, how do you standardize these containers? Are they going to fit all of the various needs? That's an interesting question. So the industry regulator is called IATA, and they've described standards for the materials that go in and also the dimensions. Currently, it's aluminum. We're looking for reinforced plastic, which is also approved, and the dimensions are fixed. So we'll have to work with those dimensions. All right. And so how much are you going to make from this? It's a $5 billion market, but what do you make? So if I pay back 85% of the industry, that's $4 billion I'm going to give back. I'll do a ref share. If I take 20%, that's a lot of money I can make. <laughs> All right. Thank you very much, Anand. Up next, Leslie. <laughs> Leslie, you ready? I'm ready. Whoa. Oh. Once the microphone gets fixed up. Oh, thank you. All right. Judges ready. Timer. Ready, set, fish! Our company has designed a nuclear reactor that runs entirely on nuclear waste. Currently, each American nuclear reactor produces about a billion dollars worth of electric power per year. Our design takes a year's worth of waste fuel from one of these conventional plants and turns it into an additional $1.5 billion worth of electricity. That's per reactor per year from waste fuel that the plant would otherwise have to pay to dispose of. Our design also streamlines the licensing procedure because it's compact enough to be built on the sites of existing power plants. So, <laughs> sorry. Um, so that streamlines the licensing procedure. Our design also reduces the waste's radioactive lifetime from 100,000 years to hundreds of years, so you reduce the need for geological repositories, like Yucca Mountain. My partner and I are both MIT PhD students in nuclear engineering. We're looking for funding to commercialize. I want to give you your time to finish. That was great. Oh, well, just the last thing I was saying is that we're looking for funding to commercialize the design. No, it was, it was just one word that got cut. What are the biggest risks? Well, the biggest risk is that it'll take too long for the Nuclear Regulatory Commission to license it. Because the NRC has been loosening up its licensing procedures over the past 10 years, but it still, um, it still is, takes a while for them to license new designs, though there are a number of other nuclear startups that have been started since around 2005 in the U.S., about the end of time in the U.S. All right. Thank you, Leslie. And now for our final elevator pitch of the evening. All right, please. Um, are you ready? Wait, can you guys hear me? Please stay, just stay. <laughs> Wait, can you guys hear me now? Yeah. Okay. All it's right. like a bright light, so I can't really see anything. I'm going to move back. <laughs> Judges are ready. Um, we got a timer. Ready, set, fish! All right, so 
So how many of you have a disability or know someone who has a disability? Raise your hand. So there's quite a few of you. Now, did you know that there's no website that currently exists that provides product ratings of ordinary goods and services for people with disabilities? So we want to change that. And by we, I mean me and a team of Harvard and MIT undergraduates. And what we want to bring you is a website where people with disabilities can um, freely rank and view reviews for different products and services. And we will have technology that will allow you to view the most relevant review at reviews for whatever issues you may face, regardless of whether or not the reviewer has the exact same disability as you. Now, why is this relevant? Because 21% of the US population currently identifies as having some sort of disability. This adds up to 60 million people and their family and friends who could use our service. So we believe we could generate re revenue through targeted advertising and product promotions and help a lot of people at the same time. Thank you. Starting a community-driven site is not easy. How do you plan on getting from two or three users to a few million to make this really useful and valuable? Um, I guess part of it would be the fact that um, we have to get our name out there, and this is helping a lot to begin with. So <laughs> yeah, there's that. And then um, part of the thing is that we're all college students, so through coll other college students, it's really easy to spread the word about something through networks and let other people know about it and then tell alums. And then there's also a bunch of news sources that we can tell this to. Are you saying MIT students have a disability? Wait. <laughs> um, I'm not saying that MIT kids have a disability, but there is a significant population of people with disabilities here. All right. Thank you very much, Amy. Please just uh, take a seat, and we're going to send our judges off. Let's give them a round of applause. They have a tough decision ahead of them. Please be quick. Um, all right, round three finalists. Come on up. We're going to do our voting. Audience favorite. You guys know the drill? Please text your favorite. Get a wave going. To double two, triple three. All right. Wait. Have we never been to a sporting no. event? <laughs> I'm never getting into those clubs, even with the app. Thank you guys. Everyone got their vote in? Yeah. yeah, all right. Let's see. Oh, okay, we got a we got a sponsor. So we'd like to thank our platinum sponsors one more time. Brown Rudnick. Unfortunately, I don't have the voice that Saeed did. And uh, Morse Barnes Brown Pendleton. Thank you very much for your support. We really appreciate it. It goes without saying a 0K business plan competition is not nearly as enticing as a 100K business plan competition. So we really appreciate the support of our sponsors. All right. I think we've got our group three finals coming up. Big moment. Oh. Congratulations on it. All right. Now, I believe before we go through, we are actually going to invite uh, the managing director of the entire 100K business plan competition. He's in charge of all three contests. We're going to invite him up here to speak along with Luke. So uh, it is my pleasure to introduce you to Daniel Venoni and Luke. <laughs> Thank you all very much for coming out tonight. This is an incredible turnout for us. It was an incredible contest for us so far, but it's just the start of the contest for us. So we want to give you a little preview of what's to come. So over the last three days, we've seen hundreds of pitches. We've seen some good pitches. We've seen some pitches that have missed their target. <laughs> yes, I'm a Red Sox fan. We've seen some pitches that made us feeling a little green. And we've seen some pitches that